and welcome to Taft's Word. Basically what we're going to be doing in this episode, or what I'm going to be doing, is giving you my opinion on how the pre-season has gone for us. Uh, our curtain raiser, the fantastic 2-0 victory over Swansea, and of course the, the shape of our squad and how it's looking ready to kick the new season in properly. So, what's good at the moment is that we've got 22 players on our books, which, which I always say is healthy to have because effectively it's basically showing that we can currently field two separate players. 11s uh in you know if <laughs> so basically yeah like i say 22 divided by two is 11 so it's two separate 11 especially we've got two goalkeepers and then a good mix of defenders midfielders and forwards now i'm going to go through this team and this is our squad as it is so tom king and nick townsend as goalkeepers which are two great choices for league two of course um in defense we've got liam shepherd ashley baker carl hakins David Longking, Mickey, Mickey Dimitri, Brandon Cooper, Ryan Haynes and Joe Woodowis. So that's a really good selection of defenders. I think the addition of Brandon Cooper put the cherry on top with that one. Because I've always been a big fan of Brandon Cooper. So I'm really, really happy with that one. Um, midfield, so re Scott Bennett was massive for us. Uh, Josh Labardi, Matt Dolan, who looked phenomenal against Swansea. Fair play to him. Uh, he's, he's had his daters, he's had his critics. And I think... Uh, it looks as though Flea has created like a new type of position. Uh, he looked at a lot of the time. Matt Donald looked like he was playing as a centre back, but he was spraying balls all over the field. So, are we talking um, a real proper uh, sort of shotgun quarterback type? You know, if you know your American football, um, who's going to be spraying the ball across the field from a, an extremely deep position, effectively uh, a playmaking defender. Possibly, but it worked. It worked. So Matt Dolan, Josh Sheehan, obviously great game as well. Oh, yeah. And Liam Collins, uh, I, I felt was excellent as well. Um, he's looking like he's going to come on and leap some bounds. So everyone's been waiting for Flinney to bring through an emerging talent from our academy. Uh, obviously, with the failures of the likes of Liam Angel, um, who else? Uh, Finley Woods, uh, Tom Owen Evans. Um, who else hasn't really made it? Uh, Jay Fulston, Dom Jeffries. Uh, there's been a lot of players who've sort of left uh, under Flinney's watch. Uh, you know, young players. And it's, it's been a bit frustrating. Toure, of course. Modo Toure is uh, possibly the, the, the biggest one. Um, we've waited for an emerging talent to come through under Flynn. And Liam Collins could be the one. Then Scott Twine, I know he's more of a forward, but he looked like he played in a midfield position, as did Kevin Ellison when he played in the friendly against um, uh, Hereford. Uh, so it looks as though Kevin Ellison will be used as a midfield rather than a midfield player rather than a forward. But because if you look at the players that we've got here, the adaptability of some of these players is phenomenal. I mean, Mickey Dimitriou can cover a centre back and uh, a left back position. Um, You've got Ashley Baker seem to cover centre back and right back. Liam Shepard is a great right back. David Longking, uh, Brandon Cooper, Joe Woodowis, uh, Carl Hopkins are going to be centre backs, uh, and then um, midfield Scott Bennett could also be a defender, but also a midfielder. I think we'll be we'll see be seeing him more of a midfield player more than anything. Obviously Labardi Dolan looks like he's playing defence slash midfield as well. Josh Sheehan, Liam Collins could potentially work as a winger and a forward. Scott Twine, midfield forward. Kevin Ellison, midfield forward. And then going on to your actual forwards then, Armand, Tristan Abrahams, uh, Sosaiku Jane. That's what I'm going to call him until I, I, I learn the co correct pronunciation of his uh, surname and Ryan Taylor. Obviously, we've got Adi Aziz. Um, Adi Aziz, there's, he's very, very heavily speculated to either be leaving the club uh, on mu on a mutual agreement or to be going back to Torquay on loan. So, as far as I'm concerned, we've got 22 players and Adi Aziz is one of them until we're told otherwise. So something may come out today. If if it was a done thing that Adi Aziz is no longer a player of ours or is being sent out on loan, um, I'd imagine um, it would have come out at around at the same time as um, the Brandon Cooper deal being announced yesterday. So, uh, I mean, I, I felt we played phenomenally against Swansea. Like I said, we've got a great mix of players there. We've made some great additions to the team. Uh, the bad business from last season seems to be eradicated. Uh, well, to the point that um, Corey Whiteley, 
Leadbitter and um, Ekpetit are all, are all been sent out on loan. Hopefully, and well, we should be getting wages covered, at least a good percentage of them. So that's freed up the budget for us to sign these other players. So, yeah, I'm I'm really confident about this season. Um, I mean, if that Swansea game is anything to go by, um, we could really do some great stuff. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the game tonight to see the other players play. I've already bought the match pass for that one. And then the League 2 opener then come the weekend. So very exciting times indeed. The moment, considering the doom and gloom throughout the lockdown. It was it was, it was, was quite um, depressing really. Uh, especially when we were told Bennett and, and um, Jamil Matt's contracts weren't going to be renewed. We thought, well, there's two of our best players going there. I think through Ryan Taylor, we've got a great replacement for Jammer. But then uh, Psycho Jani uh, looks looks like a really, really good forward. And obviously we've got Amund and Abrahams played brilliantly against um, Swansea, bagging two goals. I mean, the defence looks solid. I mean, really, really organised as well. You know, we held a great line, caught them offside a few times. So like a really, really organised defence. And Swansea City, you know, um, couldn't break a stain. And when you've got a player like uh, Andre Ayew, who played for them? They played a strong team, Swansea did, and even though they commanded the majority of the possession, you'd expect them to anyway. Um, we still, you know, looked comfortable. You know, they never really looked like they were going to score. You know, at any real point, you know, no, we didn't have any near misses, or you no, know, we didn't get away with any. So I, I felt you know, we looked great. I thought we looked really good against Hereford, as much as the Hereford commentators might try and uh, fool you into thinking that. You know, the, the golfing class didn't really look like it was there. Uh, well, we battered them 4-0 at the end of the day, and in the first half we were finding our feet, but, but you could tell who was the the team higher up in the leagues even then. So, you know, I, th I felt we played brilliantly against Hereford, and, and we could have beaten them by a lot more. Uh, but like I say, you can't really read much of much into the result of a friendly match. But then we stamped our, our authority on the league, through the Swansea game then. Talking about the Carabao Cup then as well, I think the the draw, if you look at it, has been favourable to us. Now, a lot of people look for a, a way to a big club. But at the moment, it's pointless being a way to a big club when there's no fans in the doors at the moment. We've got two rounds to play over the next sort of few weeks. Um, we've got Cambridge at home, which is possibly the most winnable game we could have got, especially with having the home tie. And considering how well we played against Swansea... I think I'd fancy us against the, the victors of either um, Oxford or Watford. But if we do get Watford, there could be a potential TV thing. I mean, it should have been on TV anyway, the, the Swansea game. I can't for the life of me understand why that was never on Sky. But plenty of people paid the tenner to get it. Well worth every penny of it, of course. And, you know, I mean, you, you pay for the rest of them as well. I mean, you know, uh, the game tonight is only EFL trophy. But I'm that excited on, on the back of that performance against Swansea that I'm absolutely buzzing for it tonight. Usually, you know, I mean, you know, even though I go to those games in, in normal circumstances, you know, you pay your fiver for your ticket and all that, you know, I don't always really look forward to them. It's like, oh, it'd be nice to see a couple of players play, you know, but at this particular stage, I'm absolutely buzzing to watch that game tonight on TV. Not even, you know, can't even go, but I'm buzzing for it more now. You know, because of how exciting our squad looks, and it'd be good to see the others play. I'm hoping uh, players like Woodowis get a go. Ellison didn't figure at all in the squad um, against Swansea. Don't know whether that was something to do with the injury he picked up in the Hereford game, but hopefully he'll get a good run out. Uh, Psycho Jane will get a good go a good going. Uh, Ryan Taylor hopefully will start. Uh, you know, I can say that you know there's this so much excitement about it at the moment. I mean, there's uh, Lewis Collins I want to see again. I want to see Lewis Collins play again. Robbie Wilmot will probably get a, a, a game this time. Um, like I said, Allison hopefully will get a game. Uh, David Long King, we haven't really looked at yet. Hope hope to see him play. Um, you know, see what he's made of. Brandon Cooper could get an instant go. Um, Ashley Baker to play at right back. Liam Shepard looked great. And of course, Nick Townsend started in the Carabao Cup. Is he the number one now? Or will Tom King take place tonight and have a good game and start against Gunthorpe on the weekend? We don't know. Uh, but that's what I mean. I mean, you know, it, there's a lot of healthy competition in that squad and there's good quality throughout. So I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the business that we've done. 
and for all those who criticize the board throughout all I can say is in future just try and have a bit of patience and see what the plan is first there's always a plan uh, sometimes I don't agree with what the board does you know like I said uh, the sponsorship thing I, I still can't get my head around it but it happens they raise money and regardless we've been able to afford to put a good squad together so yeah I, I was quick I was critical of that but irrespective we've still put a great squad together and the home kit looks absolutely amazing I can't wait for them to get more in so I can go and get mine because uh, they only add up to XL, and I went away hoping I, oh, by the time I come back, uh, you know, after the weekend, um, I'd be able to uh, to go down and get mine. But they've run out of them all, you know, or anything that would fit me, they've run out of. So hopefully they'll get more stock in soon, and uh, I can get down there and go and get one. Because I think the home kit is awesome. I probably won't buy the away kit. I'm still not a fan of it. But then the third kit I'll probably buy because, you know, it's a county kit for one. And the thing I simple and sweet i like third kit simple and sweet we've played in red in the past you know on a third kit or even on an away kit in the past we've got no problem with the color um you know and like the design you don't need a, a funky design for it to be a decent kit it's a football kit it's not a fashion statement at the end of the day but the home kit does look really tidy so i'm really looking forward to getting mine and wearing it with absolute pride and of course hopefully it won't be too long until we can get into the ground. In the meantime, uh, for those struggling with iFollow, there is a video up today as well as this one and the conclusion of our um, Amber Army viewers EFL Exiles Best 11. Uh, you know, like I say, follow that guide if you're, not, if you're a bit unsure on iFollow, and then it'll also give you some uh, pointers on how to get it onto your TV as well. So, uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, hopefully plenty of you will be watching tonight and the club are making some decent money from the match day passes. Anyway, that'll do for now then, guys. Um, obviously, I'll be doing more of these task words a bit more regularly now. Now there's more to talk about. So keep an eye out for this beautiful face. Not. And, uh, you know, there'll be plenty to talk about, I'm sure. Hopefully more content to come from more people this season as well. You know, we're with some fresh faces around. And um, Amber Talk. Amber Talk will be making a return. But what we'll be looking at potentially is for you to send us your videos of you talking about performances. And then we'll put together a, a bit of a video doing it that way. So either way, we can make sure that you guys get plenty of content and, and hopefully more one-to-ones to come as well. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the 14 I've done so far. Uh, like I said, there will be more to come and there's going to be some uh, very, very tidy uh, Newport County names coming through very soon as well. So keep your eyes peeled for them. Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, uh, cheer for now. Um, up the county. Thank you. Many thanks for watching the latest content on the Amber Army channel. Please make sure you leave us a like. Make sure you subscribe for more content, both for the neutral football fan and also plenty of Newport County. Even more Newport County uh, content can be found on the club's iFollow channel on the link above. It is just £4.49 per month to subscribe to that service. And those of you feeling extra generous, can also support us on Patreon on the link at the bottom there. Um, that would be a monthly donation of your choice. Thank you again. Make sure you've subscribed. And as always, up the county.